Hey everybody, Brooklyn in the house, back at you to do your weekly read. This is going to be for the sign of Libra from November 1st to the 7th, or because the date is just a contingency, it means nothing. Time is linear and we're all on different timelines. Whenever you come across it, it's when you're meant to see it. Oh, and by the way, when you do come across it, only take something if it resonates. If it doesn't resonate, leave it for somebody else. There's sick, thick energy on YouTube, right? This is little Delilah. She's our little spirit guide and mascot on the channel, in case you haven't met her already. So she just sits there looking cute and sleeping. All right, guys, let's get into it. <clears throat> Don't forget the two situations. Situation one, never give your money to anybody on the internet ever that contacts you. If you would like to contact me, it's on you. My information is in the box below on how to do that. I will never reach out to you. Second situation is these friggin' buttons and bells. So, if you can find it in your heart to ring my bell or hit my button, I would be ever so grateful and happy, and I would really, really appreciate it. It's free. You know, subscribe, whatever. Love to have you. And thank you very, very much ahead of time. Here we go. With an attitude of gratitude, I would humbly like to thank Source, the Archangels, Ascended Masters, Spirit and my ancestors for overseeing this act of divination. Spirit, please help me to relay clear and concise messages for the higher good of the collective of Libra. And by the way, Libra, in case nobody told you today, Delilah and I love you. So here we go, clear and ground. <clears throat> Libra, show me Libra. Okay, we have the tower. Wow, there's a surprise, a shock, something going on. Spirit coming in to shake shit up and shake it down because, uh, you know, some of you are going through a tower right now, Libra. Okay, you could have just went through it or you could be coming into it depending on where you are on the timeline, right? The tower is Scorpio and uh, Aries, excuse me, energy. And the tower talks about, you know, like I said, some kind of chaos, some kind of trauma, something unexpected, a change, confusion, it could be disaster, pain, I mean, the, you know. Could be something. Something you're not probably going to like. Let's see. Or you're not liking going through right now. All right, Libra? Show me with these supporting cards for the tower. Let's see what's going on here. Okay. We're not taking this. <clears throat> Clear and ground. Thank you. Can I have a supporting card? Pop it. Thank you. Justice. Okay. So there's, you know, maybe the tower is that there's going to be some, there's some kind of fairness and balance being put into a situation. So, you know, if you were... On the uneven scale of some kind of a, you know, where something wasn't really very fair or equal or nice or whatever it was, there could be a towel coming in to even that out, right? Even the keel. So, depending on whether you were on the negative or positive side, you could be on the, uh, yeah, you know what I'm saying, right? That's going to depend what side you are on this karmic justice scale here. So, it's going to be different for everybody. Show me the foundation. What's going on at the foundation of this? What happened? Show me what happened. Okay, Queen of Wands. Well, the Queen of Wands is somebody very assertive. It's a fire sign. Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. So there could have been somebody like that involved. But somebody who was uh, not very emotional, not very affectionate, not kind. Um, you know, it's like a, it's a very, it's a very um, unloving energy, actually. It's, I mean, they're assertive, they're brave, they're strong. They'll go after what they want, but as soon as they don't want it no more, you know, it's not even, yeah, <coughs> it's not even a thing, like, it doesn't matter. There's a lot of casualties involved with a Queen of Wands, I can tell you that. But it is somebody that's assertive, so who's ever got the fire in the chart that's being assertive, whatever. Show me the crowning. Can I see the crowning, please, and thank you, the crowning. Show me the crowning. Thank you. We have a three of wands in reverse. Okay, so, you know, uh, this is a lack of progress. These are some obstacles or delays. This is like playing it small. The three of wands in reverse talks about um, some kind of disappointment or, uh, you know, it's just, yeah, it's not really getting anywhere with anything. It's like a inertia. You have the King of Wands in reverse. This is not good. The King of Wands in reverse, Aries, Leo, or Sagittarius, right? This is somebody who's, um, you know, they could be manipulative. 
Um, they can be very forceful. They can be a tyrant. They can be um, loud, aggressive. They can be egotistical, selfish. They commit fidelity. I mean, manipulative, you know. That's the narcissist guy. Or, or girl, but it's the king, so it's a masculine energy there. Show me. Somebody very severe, jealous, deceitful. I mean, it's not a good energy. Huh? We're keeping these. So, we have... The high priestess. So then you're going to have to use your intuition, okay? Because this is what's coming into your future that you don't see. So it's a king of wands in reverse. I'm distorted, you know, evil person, okay? Use your intuition here. Because this uh, this person, you know, the king of wands in reverse can be deceitful. So they can trick you into thinking one thing or another. You know, they can be very manipulative. So you're going to have to use your intuition and follow your gut on this one. This is, you know, obviously they want something from you. Now, that's going to be different. So, you got the Four of Cups in your actual environment. Which, you know, um, the Four of Cups talks about being disgusted and weary. The Four of Cups talks about not being satisfied with anything. The Four of Cups talks about, you know, having some kind of apathy or disconnection, boredom, indifference, disconnect. Maybe you're contemplating things, but nothing's really satisfying you. You're just not, you know, it's just not hitting the mark. So show me now what Spirit's advice is. Maybe you're going to be bored like, I have no apathy for this situation. That could be good. All right, whatever that is, because that's a hot mess. So just be mindful. Uh, what's the advice from Spirit, please? Advice, advice. Okay, so you got an ace of wands. All right, well, you know, some kind of, um, some kind of success. There is some kind of success in a situation. The Ace of Wands talks about inspiration and enthusiasm, some kind of confidence, um, maybe getting a creative spark or having a new passion. Oh, look at this. I didn't see the chariot. So that's the most likely outcome. Well, that's really, that's much better. Getting passion, having a passion in your life, getting the fire lit under your ass. Yeah, something's going to light the fire under your ass. Something's going to happen fast. Whatever it is, it's going to light a fire under your ass and you're going to be inspired to do something here. With the chariot, this is... Uh, you know, cancer energy. The chariot talks about some kind of victory or overcoming obstacles, success, ambition, willpower, control, focus. It's moving fast, though. And it could be something coming at you. So all those things like success could be coming at you. But you're going after it, too, like hard. This person's control that chariot. And it's, yeah, with the success card at the end, I mean, that's it speaks for itself. Oh, and the Wheel of Fortune turning in your favor. My own to me, Libra, this is so good, right? So, this is Sagittarian energy. That means the Wheel of Fortune, it's your time for good luck and good karma. So, yeah, now you're going to find something that you find very passionate that's going to make you successful. It's coming at you fast. So, thank God for the tower. The tower is going to be the catalyst to this all. The tower is going to be the catalyst to this all. So you may have like a bad moment there, but it's going to bring some fairness and balance into the situation. Or maybe somebody who was a little freaking just, you know, I mean, the queen of wands, you know, upright, they're not the worst person. But you, you got this king of wands in reverse. Maybe, you know, it could be the same person coming back around. Who knows? I don't know. But whatever it is, use your head. Now we got the gummy bear tower. I mean, the gummy bear tarot. Here's the tower. Scorpio and Aries energy. Let's have it. We got temperance. Sagittarian energy. So, you know, temper your emotions. Temperance is self-control, right? Temperance is balance, patience, and inner calm. Having a perspective, uh, you know, being harmonious with oneself, right? Having tranquility over things. Just self-control. Mind, body, and soul. Show me the temperance. Show me the temperance. Libra. Come on. Temperance, please. Show me temperance, please. Thank you. Okay, we got them. So you got this one popped first. The knight in reverse. So, you know, something could... The knight in reverse. This could be secrets coming out. This could be, um, you know, anything that was in the shadow that you didn't see now getting revealed. This also could be because it's the reverse of the night. You know, something could be happening in the morning. Okay? So, but it is still the night card. So maybe it will be like after 12 p.m., you know, after 12 a.m., in the, in the early part of the morning, when it's still dark, maybe. You're going to find out something. Some of you might get a phone call, a message, a text. Could be anything, right? There's a king of swords. Maybe this is the one that's messaging, texting you, or maybe the one that you're going to have to uh, you find out some information about at night. Okay? And then you're going to have to temper your emotions, whatever it is. 
All right, whatever kind of, it could be some kind of communication. With the King of Swords, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, this is somebody who could be in the military of the law. It's somebody very efficient, very smart, a problem solver, articulate. I mean, the King of Swords does not mess around, okay? The King of Swords is clear thinking and reason. It's authority, discipline, you know, intellectual. Like I said, articulate. So somebody's not going to have a problem telling you how they feel about something. And it's after they thought about it for a long time, trust me. And it's going to, you know, they don't just have diarrhea of the mouth. Okay, so in the Eight of Pentacles, this is going to be something either that they want to work on or that, you know, maybe you're both going to want to work on or somebody's going to want to work on. It could be a business idea with the Eight of Pentacles, right? So uh, it's going to be something that you're going to look like look at as if you really want to work on it or they're going to tell you that they really want to work on something, okay? Whatever that is. So let me see now. What else do we have? You know, the Eight of Pentacles talks about commitment and dedication, you know? The Eight of Pentacles talks about uh, you know, talent also, becoming a master at one's skill, at one's, yeah, skills or masters or something like that. Okay, so now we have, we have the Six of Swords. Okay, so the Six of Swords talks about transition, sorrow and transition usually it says, but uh, it's also um, a departure, it's accepting lessons, it's moving on, it's putting distance in, be you know, between you and uh, another Entity, whatever that entity is, that could have caused a lot of conflict and drama. So, yeah, there could be some loss. The Five of Cups does talk about, you know, loss. The Five of Cups is regret, grief, disappointment. So, you maybe you have to put some distance between you and somebody. Maybe that's what you're going to find out. Um, you know, or that's what you're going to work hard at, right? You're going to decide to work hard at putting some distance between you and somebody. And it's going to cause you some, you know, you're going to be sad about it, right? That's all there is to it. You're going to have regret, remorse. You know, the Five of Cups is, she's looking down at these cups and she's very, you know, yeah, melancholy to say the least. But, you know, there's still other cups there, so. I mean, they're not all empty. Yeah, so you got the Queen of Cups. So there is somebody, Cancer, Pisces, or Scorpio, around you who's loving, kind, nurturing. The Queen of Cups is like the mom of the, of the bunch, right? I always say that. She's the mom of the queens. She's affectionate, she's kind, nurturing. And then you got the magician, the magist. So he's, you know, this is number one of the major arcana. Who is this? This is a master manipulator, Gemini energy, right? That's what the magist is, okay? You know, they know how to manipulate anything. They are resourceful. They are, you know, they are inspired. They have willpower, logic, skill, intellect, everything they need, power. They, they know how to make things happen. They know how to be very resourceful and manipulate the situations, uh, for their benefit, for their higher good. They can also manipulate people, so be careful. You could have a water sign around you that's very manipulative with this spread too, right? You could have some kind of water sign around you that could be manipulative. Maybe they, you know, they have air in their chart too, but regardless, this is the kind of, kind of manipulation. So, you know, there you go. Now, this may be somebody that you uh, uh, let go of already with the Five of Cups. I mean, depending how far back you want to go here, but uh, let's see. So, the Magician. All right, so now you got this Eight of Cups. So, Eight of Cups talks about um, some kind of detachment. I told you, we're fed up, I'm done, this is it. So, this water sign that could be manipulative is actually, you know, you're detaching from this, whoever you are that I'm talking to, because, you know, the detachment is surrounded. I don't know if I pick these all up, I'm going to do it. Look, the detachment is surrounded. Loss and sadness, a water sign, somebody manipulative, they could have Gemini in their chart, or manipulating the situation, and uh, detachment. So, yeah, looks like walking away. Now, I'm hearing... Craig David, I'm walking away. I don't even know how that song goes. I hear it, but I don't know how it goes. I'm walking away. It's Craig, it's walking away, Craig David. Something like that. Yeah. All right, whatever. Come on, show me the Zeta Cups. Get a headache. Let's go. Too many messages. Too many messages. Mm -mm. Okay, so the Wheel of Fortune. Mm, turning in your favor. I mean, you know, that's really good. That means that luck is on your side right now, right? Um, whatever, you know, yeah. This detachment, detaching from whoever this is, if this is somebody that could be very loving, but very manipulative, you know, you'd be like a, an old a Jewish or Italian mother. Like, you know, they, they, they have a lot of love, but they manipulate you. They can't help it, right? They use the love to manipulate you. But, uh... You know, it's because they love you. But what I'm saying is it's like, uh, it's it's helping the Wheel of Fortune turn in your favor now. Okay, this is going to make your luck improve. All right? Show me this. Wheel of Fortune. So 
So the Wheel of Fortune is Sagittarian energy, right? It's Jupiter. Show me. This one wants to come out. Seven of Pentacles. All right, so, and you know, this is investing effort, the Seven of Pentacles. I mean, we know that. The Seven of Pentacles talks about, you know, a vision. Maybe look, waiting to see what your harvest is going to look like. Um, it's the results. It's growth. It's progress. It's patience, though, because you're waiting to see it uh, come to fruition. So it's having to have the patience and making sure that, uh, you know, what you've been investing your effort in is going to be fruitful. So um, show me this King of Wands. Oh, my God. That popped right out. Five of Pentacles. So this is somebody that, um, okay, this is somebody that could, uh, the King of Wands in reverse, definitely financially uh, un unstable here, okay, with the Five of Pentacles. This is somebody who's destitute. They, you know, this could be destitute not only financially, materialistically, but emotionally and spiritually and mentally and the whole nine because it's in reverse, this King of Wands. So just a, a void, a deficit, um, some kind of destitution there. And more than one area. This is what. So I'm telling you to be double careful now. So now we got this five of pentacles. In, I mean, five of pentacles. Loss, hardship. Could be somebody, you know, you're going to have to cut the loss. This is what. This is what I'm hearing. Cut your losses and run. This is what I'm hearing. I have to write that down for the title. Cut your losses and run. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you got the seven of torches here. Let's see what we got. We got the seven of torches on top of the five of pentacles. So stand your ground. This is what, stand your ground, yeah. Cut your losses, stand your ground, run. You got the king of torches in reverse. No, guys, this is not funny now, okay? It's because it's clarifying the king of wands in reverse. So the king of, you know, again, the king of torches in this deck is the king of wands, right? Torches and wands are the same thing. It's the fire king, see? So what I'm saying is this person might need the actual mental health. I mean, I'm talking like the king narcissist. Male or female? This is one manipulative, cruel, cold, calculating. I mean, I can't think of enough. Yeah. And you got the Ten of Pentacles in reverse on top of this. Broke ass. Broke as anything. Broke. Ten of Pentacles. That's okay. So Ten of Pentacles in reverse, we know it talks about, you know, breaking traditions, family dispute, conflicts over money, but it's financial failure. Okay. Which this would person would be. So really stand your ground. And, and I mean, like, run away. And once you run away, stand your ground. Don't come back. That's what that means. <laughs> Don't. You got the King of Torches clarifying the King of, the King of Torches. Yeah, same. It's, yeah. Yeah, I'm telling you guys. Do yourself a favor. Run, forest, run. Okay, so now we got the High Priestess. Use your intuition. This is what? This is your third eye. This is how you're looking at it. You're going to be using your intuition on this one. Then you, you're going to take a new leap of faith. Okay, so which way are we taking this leap of faith? I always say try to sleep of faith. I mean, you got nothing to lose. But please, I hope it's in the direction away from this. Uh, well, it's got to be with that five of pentacles because you're cutting your losses. You're cutting your losses. Yeah, so now you're going to take a leap of, in a new direction. Somewhere, you know, a direction away from Mr. Wonderful over there. Or Miss Wonderful, whoever. So I'll be this full. Wow, Libra. Yep. Okay, one far. Ace of swords in reverse. What more do you want? So, you know, some kind of hesitancy, you know, some kind of block, um, some kind of miscommunication. There could be hostility. Definitely a confusion. Clouded judgment. Uh, you know what? Yeah, make sure you don't have clouded judgment. If you're going to, hey, listen, I'm going to tell you. If you're thinking of taking a leap of faith towards this energy, a king of torches that clarifies the king of wands, both in reverse with a reverse ten of pentacles, so a broke ass on top of it. Maybe that lost everything with this Five of Pentacles. Their hardship, destitution, Five of Pentacles. Stand your ground. Use your intuition and take a leap in another direction. Please don't leap in that direction. That's the wrong direction, guys. Okay? So there is a truth that's going to come out. There is some kind of honesty that's going to come out. There could be a breakthrough in a situation. But I will tell you that with the Ace of Swords in reverse, it's not. it'll bring clarity. Um, it's not going to make you happy. It's going to bring confusion. It's going to bring hostility, miscommunication, clouded judgment. So that's why you got to use your intuition. So you're not, your judgment's not clouded here. So take the new leap of faith in a different direction. Maybe you're not exactly sure this uh, Ace of Swords, what direction that is yet. You know, so that could be the clouded judgment or the confusion. Show me. Oh, sorry. Show me. I never look at the cards when I'm doing that. I'm always looking at the board. High Priestess again. 
Mink, yeah, it's guys. Clarifying this high priestess. Listen, these are two different decks of cards. Did you see this? I mean, you guys really, either there's a Gemini around you, okay, or a, a Pisces, a Pisces. But, but I'm going to tell you something. You better use your intuition here. This is really God telling you, or spirit, or ancestors, or whatever you believe in, the cards here telling you that, you know, use your intuition so that you do not have this clouded judgment with this Ace of Swords in reverse, okay? There's no hostility. Use your intuition. Avoid the hostility. Avoid the miscommunication. Keep quiet. You know why? Keep quiet, because that's what the high priestess does. Keep quiet. Don't, you know, don't exacerbate the hostility. That's what I'm hearing. Don't exacerbate the hostility. Don't do it. This person's not even looking at the person. Look, this high priestess is not even, you can't even see her eyes. She's looking at a book and doing her own thing here. She's not paying attention to what anybody else is doing because she already knows anyway. Right? So just, yeah, keep your head down. Keep moving forward. Take this new leap of faith. Okay. So now, you got the chariot in the reverse. Something could be delayed with this chariot in reverse. There could be some obstacles, again, with the aggression, maybe even a lack of direct, you know, direction. Maybe, you know, so somebody doesn't know which way to go. You got a nine of swords in reverse. So now, you know, maybe somebody needs some mental help. And I'm going to say this really seriously. Nine of swords in reverse is finding help, okay? So it could be mental help. Like if, if you have uh, issues financially, it could be a financial advisor. But I'm going to say definitely the Nine of Swords could be finding some help for some mental issues. And, you know, let's go back to here for a second there, Libra. What do we got? You know, somebody with a lot of mental issues here who's broke on top of it and desperate, right? And, and completely, you know, destitute here. And look, look, all these cards are like this, right? They're all coming towards you. And what are you doing? You're going back this way, holding your ground. So hold your ground against this one. I'm telling you. Oh, my God, please. I don't want to see nothing happen to my Libras. I love you all so much. You have no idea. All right, so now you got the Nine of Swords in reverse, like I said. So some kind of mental health maybe somebody needs. Let them go find it themselves, all right? You don't, you're not responsible for that. This is not your problem, all right? Oh, boy. Okay, let me see. What else do we got? It's also, you know, recovery, shame, guilt, and learning how to cope with things. But, uh, you know, probably not without some help. And it's not to be ashamed of. I mean, everybody needs somebody to talk to once in a while, right? You never know. And, uh, somebody, yeah. Show me this nine of swords in reverse. What's going on here? Show me the nine. Of, yeah, thank you. Okay, I'm taking them all. You got a six of cups in reverse. So somebody's living in the past. Somebody needs to move forward, you know. Somebody could be being very naive and uh, maybe too forgiving, you know. But somebody's, like, just in, living in the past with the Six of Cups in reverse. I mean, okay. So now, what do we have here? We got some kind of a breakthrough in a situation, right? Oh. Hmm. Uh, okay, look. There could be somebody watching you with the Prince of Swords, right? The Prince of Swords, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. This could be somebody watching you, obviously. It could be friends, neighbors, co-workers. It could be, you know, the people at work, people on your social platforms. But they're not watching you in a good way. It's nefarious. Look, he's got, you know, they're looking to stick you with this. All right? They just can't wait. So it's your blood on that sword. So they, they got some, and really it came in with the devil in reverse. Okay, so what does this tell you? You know, uh, this is not good. Okay? The devil in reverse talks about some... some Maybe somebody trying to overcome addiction or um, somebody trying to reclaim some kind of power. Maybe somebody's watching to try to reclaim some kind of power over you. Um, maybe you're detached from this person, like you're independent right now. Um, it would be coming out of uh, toxicity. So maybe you were codependent with this person. And now they're watching you, though, because they want to reclaim some kind of power over you, okay? This is what I'm telling you. This is Capricorn energy now, all right? So you have Capricorn, you have air. I mean, you know, yeah. What else do we got? I said Sagittarius, Cancer, Aries. I mean, it's all down here. It doesn't matter. Like, it's all it's all the same. You got water, big time. So it could be any signs. You know, I went I went on them as I went along. So Cancer, I said, now you got this, you know, the Ace of Wands. Let's go. I really made a mess out of these cards today. Sorry, but a lot of messages. Show me. Okay. Look, we got the Holy Trifecta in one. Isn't that great? I love when that happens. They're all in reverse. 
Okay, so here we go. Ace of Pentacles. We're going to start with, no, what hit first? The morning hit first, right? Because it was up down like this. Okay, so look, the morning. It's in reverse, just like the night was in reverse. So, so that could be in the evening, you know, or it could be in the late morning. Like, I mean, the early morning, like when it's still dark. So the morning is significant. Maybe somebody's going to wake up with uh, downloads or dreams. You're going to find out something, you know, in the night, like in the middle of the night. Um, with that other card. Because don't forget, you got the night in reverse over here. So it's like, this is like canceling each other out. The night in reverse, the morning in reverse. So this is like a specific time of day. And I'm getting when it's it's before dawn. Like, so maybe somebody's going to get some kind It's before dawn because it's not light out really in either one of the cards, right? So maybe something before dawn, but in the early morning hours of the night. Okay, I know you got that. All right, so that goes down here. And uh, all right, so this is clarifying the Ace of Wands. So this is clarifying, you know... Um, Something that's going to make you maybe feel passionate. Spark a flame under your ass. You're going to find it inspiring. Maybe you're going to get some kind of creative spark. I don't know. You also got the Ace of Pentacles in reverse, though. The Ace of Pentacles in reverse, uh, this could talk about some missed chances, some bad invents, investments, maybe a lack of planning, maybe some stinginess. Um, yeah. So, you know, it could be like some kind of ignorance of financial instability. And you got a Queen of Swords in reverse. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Yeah. Cold-hearted, overly emotional, pessimistic, harsh, bitter, cruel. Malicious, deceitful, backstabbing, negative, unprepared. So somebody who's just a hot mess. That's the end of that. Okay? A hot mess person. You got a lot of people that are coming at you. You know, somebody who does not thinking. They don't think. Okay? And if they do, it's in a vicious way. Like, how am I going to manipulate people? You got an ace of cups here at the bottom of the deck. So, you know, there is some joy or happiness. There, there could be some intimacy or some kind of emotional bond. Maybe some spirituality. Definitely intuition. You know, even love. But uh, be careful. You better use your intuition to make sure you're doing the right thing. And, you know, these people are okay. And they don't need some mental help. I'm just saying. You know, people could be hiding that from you. Taking medications and being half crazy. And maybe you don't even recognize it. Until they, you know... So the rubber band snaps. I'm hearing what? Okay, yeah. Can I please have cards, Kipper? Wow, it's not easy. Okay, so there's a main female involved. Number two. Now you got a pathway. So if you're in any kind of shadow, any kind of dark, maybe unfair side of the scales there that we talked about, you know, there's a pathway now opening out to illumination and to the sun. There's a pathway opening to the sun, the happiest card in the deck. And these butterflies represent transformation, right? So rebirth and coming out of your cocoon now. Those beautiful wings, right? Show me. Show me the money, honey. Show me Libra. Come on, give me something. Come on. Thank you. Gee whiz. Okay, so now you got 16 or 7. This is free parking, right? Somebody's in somebody's head here. They're not paying rent, but they're taking up an awful lot of space. We have WRM, CRO, S. That looks like a V. Right? What is that? Definitely a C. Okay. Those could be letters that could be here. 39 or 12. You got some kind of a community involved here. Okay. Now, it could be a community of anything, okay? It could be a community of what you do, like I'm in the community, the tarot community, or it could be a community in your neighborhood, or, you know, anything, okay? Community. But it's nice. It seems like normal people that, you know, are like-minded and kind and safe, and says, there's nothing precarious about this situation. 39 to 12. You also got the letters CM up here, which are very uh, predominant in the uh, Kipper. Okay, here we got 25 or 7. So somebody could be in high honor. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean the military or the law, although it could be. It could just be somebody has a lot of respect for somebody else. I hold you in high honor. Like, you know, you know what I mean? You hold somebody in high honor. It doesn't necessarily mean... But it could be somebody in the military or the law. I mean, it's going to be different for everybody. Right? Right. Show me. Show me. One more here. You got 36, which comes to a 9. It's a distant horizon. Somebody could be away from, you know, like far away from you. There could be some kind of physical distance between you. Maybe you and this community or you with this person that you hold an eye on her, or you and this person who are, have free parking, whatever it is. Maybe the main female. 36 to 9. Maybe some of you are going to be traveling to distant horizons, okay? Uh, take a boat or a plane. It's an anchor there. And then there's a hot air balloon. Some of you are going to go hot air ballooning. I don't know. 
That could be a kite, too. I don't, you know, it's anything. It's a beautiful, it could be in the mountains. Nice, right? Again, with the CM over there. Look at that. Okay, show me. Here we go. Some of you are going to get a message. Number seven. Or maybe you're going to send a message. Uh, what else, Kipper? Come on. Come on, Kipper, give it to me. Anything else? All right, so here we go. Number 34. This, you know, this can have something to do with somebody's occupation. So whatever you do for your occupation, 34 or 7. Now you have numerology. You got 3333. Three, three, three. That could be an angel code. You could go put it in Google and you could get a message from your angels. 18 or 9. There's a child or somebody really immature involved in this. You got number 9 again. So, you know, change. Some kind of change. It could be changing your job, changing your address, changing your diet, changing your friends. Changing your thought pattern, right? Number nine again. Nine, nine. Mm -hmm. And there's a nine there. Okay. Now, you got 14. Some kind of message of concern. So, there is a message, and there's, it could be a message of concern. Could be about somebody's occupation, but something's changing. Uh, sudden wealth. So, number 11. It comes out in reverse, but we don't read kippers in reverse around here. So, a number 11 again. So, now you got 11, 11 as well down on the board. One, 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 one. Uh, this is, you know... Maybe hitting the lottery, a scratch off. I don't know. Somebody could give you money. It could be anything, okay? I don't see. You could be getting a message here. Uh, there could be some kind of courtship involved, number four. All right, let's see. Now we're going to get you uh, an oracle. Everyday witch oracle, please. You mean everyday witch or a couple because there's a lot. Okay, well, there you go. I asked for a couple, right? And they delivered. Here we go. Rebirth and reinvention. Accept love. Yeah. Then you have hibernation and rejuvenation. So that's like, you know, it's like the four of swords of the hermit. Just taking a rest. It's more like the four of swords. Um, you do have uh, healing waters. So spiritual baths, maybe going for a walk on the beach or the boardwalk or by the, you know, a lake or something, depending where you live. Some little babbly brook, whatever it is. But healing waters. Sun and stars. So this reminds me of the star card, obviously, Aquarius energy, but, you know, just the universe. I mean, knowing that you're a part of it, right? Um, prosperity and abundance. So somebody's getting prosperous here. And you have uh, make a move. So, yeah, don't wait. If there's something you want to do, make that move. Oh, I'm hearing that song now. Make that move right now, baby. <laughs> yeah, do it. Okay, tears of joy and sadness. Just remember, without one, there couldn't be the other. If you were happy all the time then you wouldn't be happy because you wouldn't know what happening this is. You have to experience sadness to know what happiness is. So yin and yang right there. All right. Now, you also have meditation for creativity. So, yeah, you know, and if some of you that don't know how to med meditate, I mean, I've been working on this for years. It's not an easy thing. OK, especially if you've got a lot of energy. But um, they got videos on YouTube to teach you how to do it. You know, it all starts with just concentrating on your breathing. A affirmation for acceptance. Always positive affirmations, people. Always. Oh, you know, the way you speak to yourself first is the most important. You have learned from life. So that's at the bottom of that. Uh, let's get you some, yeah, moonology and, uh, hold on. Moonology and some more signs other than the ones I called out. Here we go. Pop it like it's hot for Libra. Interesting reading, Libra. It was a good reading. Thank you again for hitting those buttons. Oh, my God. Thank you so much. Please subscribe, like, you know, try to keep a light around here. Here we go. A win-win outcome is forecast. Full moon and leave. Besides, somebody's got to put... <laughs> right into Lila. A new start is coming, the new moon. There's a lot of purple here. Look at this. Show the world the real you, full moon and Aquarius. You have... You and your loved ones are safe. New moon and Cancer. You have... The answers you need are coming. Full moon in Gemini. You also have water. Cancer, Pisces, or Scorpio. So, now let's see. What else? What else for Libra, please? What else for Libra? You got Virgo. You have. You're very close to achieving your goal. Give me a moon. Show me for Libra, please. Libra. What else is there for Libra tonight? You have. It's time to take action. New moon in Aries. So, yeah. What else? Let's see. Anything else? <clears throat> Give me. Okay. Neptune. So, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. You have Aquarius. You have 
your commitment is being tested first quarter moon and then up here we have the sun so leo at the bottom of the deck venus venus is uh what is venus let me think about this a minute taurus and libra so there you go okay oh wait a minute you know what i'm lying I, there you don't go i'm gonna go in a minute here i'm gonna give you some hidden truths tonight you cut them out for a couple of weeks so you can implement them again right keep it keep it uh all right Show me what the hidden truths are. Who's holding what in and biting their tongue? I don't understand. Here we go. You have. I don't react when people mention your name. I replay our conversations over and over again. Yeah, I got one on the floor. Let me get it. Hold on. Here we go. It says, I regret lying to you. So, don't they always after the case, though? I mean, really. They always regret it after. Just don't do it in the first place. Then you'll have no regrets, right? The hell? Really? Yeah. You got, we need each other, we need to let each other go. Okay. Suffice to say, if they lie to you, they, you already did, right? And if they don't react when people are mentioning your name. Here we go. I lost myself for a little while. Uh, not all that. Not all that. What else with the hidden truths? A little more time around the mountain. Anything else? I'm done. That's it. Okay. It's time for me to heal now. And I am not available. At the bottom, finding out the truth nearly crushed me. So thank you, Libra. Always remember, Libra, logic and integrity. Act with kindness and love. Let things go. Fear is your enemy because it is an illusion. And trust in God because karma is real. Until next time, Libra, love and light.